Well, I think we have to understand, like you said, the context of it and uh, the context of the latest uh, uh, pro Hamas flotilla of ships is uh, Turkey's very rapid uh, slide away from the West and into the arms of Iran as a full member of the Iranian jihadist Axis uh, in, the, in the region. And this, uh, this uh, whole enterprise was very much the initiative of Turkish Prime Minister Recep Erdogan, who uh, stood behind it, who sponsored the terrorist organization which poses as an NGO called IHH that was the primary organizer of this flotilla. And like you said, they have described themselves as the humanitarian effort, uh, human rights activists supposedly helping Gaza, but the fact of the matter is that uh, that was not their aim because Israeli forces made it very clear that they could uh, they could dock at Ashdod port in Israel and all of the humanitarian material uh, that they were supposedly bringing to Gaza would be uh, shipped to uh, Gaza from Israel, and they refused. That was not their aim. Their aim was to end Israel's lawful naval blockade of the Gaza coast uh, and to force so, Israel So, in, to in other words, Carolyn Glick, th this was a deliberate provocation yeah. by the Turkish government. We're, all, we're all endlessly told that it, it is... Uh, uh, Israel's closest friend in the Muslim world. Um, why would the Turks be doing this? Uh, it's at the behest, evidently, as you say, of the Prime Minister of Turkey. Um, well, they're doing it. Yes, I mean the point is is that the aim of this was a military aim as well as a diplomatic aim. The aim was to discredit diplomatically Israel's right to defend itself and militarily to uh, provide Hamas with. Uh, an, a, a naval, a maritime outlet uh, for international weapon smuggling. And um, so that was, those were the dual aims of this. And the reason is quite simple, that Turkey under Erdogan wants to reassert itself as a major force in the region, and it believes that the best way to do that is by taking a leadership role in the, uh, in the Islamist uh, campaign against Israel. And that mm -hmm. is what Erdogan is doing. And so you get these ships coming into um, the proximity of Gaza. The Israelis have tried repeatedly to tell them there is a blockade in effect that cannot go in, forewarned that commandos would be uh, brought aboard the ships uh, to prevent their coming all the way into Gaza. Right. What then, as you understand it, transpired? Well, they refused. They said, no, we're moving forward. And so... Um, the commander of Israel's navy uh, ordered uh, the Israeli naval commandos to board the ship and take control of it and interdict it and, and transfer it to Ashdod port. And um, unfortunately, and, I, and I, I believe this is an operational failure on the IDF's part, they failed to anticipate the violence that would be exerted against the commandos when they came on board in previous, uh, in previous experiences with these kinds of... Uh, pro Hamas flotillas that have been challenging Israel's naval blockade of the Gaza coast. Uh, 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 when uh, Israeli forces have boarded these ships, they haven't met any violent resistance, and apparently they were using past president, precedent to guide them. And uh, that is not what happened. As you heard Prime Minister Netanyahu saying in the clip, uh, they were met by massive violence, by a mob scene that was uh, attempting to uh, kill them. And so they were forced to use lethal force protect themselves. And, and the thing of it is that uh, the Navy was, for whatever reason, so certain that they weren't going to be running into lethal force being used against them that the men were holding um, paintball uh, guns, and their handguns, their own lethal force, was actually inside of their uh, protective vest so that they had to reach for it and discard their non-lethal weapons of their paintball guns in order to do that. So they were completely unprepared for the kind of violence that greeted them on the dock of the ship. Yeah. Carolyn Glick, um, of the Jerusalem Post and um, of the uh, fabulous website Latma, um, you mentioned in your uh, quick take on all of this, uh, published I think earlier today, that you think it there is a connection between this and an episode that happened uh, last week in, um, in New York. Can you, in the space of a minute, give us just the essence of what happened last week and why you see there's an important connection? Yes, uh, last week the uh, Nuclear Nonproliferation Treaty 
uh, review conference met and, uh, or adjourned, and right before they adjourned, they uh, uh, had a uh, unanimous decision, 189 countries, including the United States, uh, decided that uh, they were going to try to uh, force Israel to open its nuclear installations to international inspection and try to denuclearize Israel by 2012. And the final resolution also said absolutely nothing about uh, Iran and Iran's illicit nuclear weapons program that it is carrying out under the aegis of the NPT and, uh, and trying to subvert the NPT as North Korea did before in order to proliferate uh, nuclear weapons. And so what we saw with this pylon of 189 countries is that the only is that, is that Israel is now the victim of a massive information war. And the one thing that, uh, is that and the goal of that information war uh, that is being waged against it is to demonize Israel, delegitimize its right to exist, and also delegitimize its ability to use force to protect itself. And so, really, if the two goals are met, then Israel will inevitably be destroyed because if it has no right to exist and it has no right to defend itself, then it's not going to be able to survive in this environment. No. Carolyn, we're going to have to leave it there. Thank you for that elegant summary of the challenges facing Israel and challenging us as well, let's be clear, because Israel is the little Satan, we're told, to the great Satan, which is us. And those who would destroy Israel will try to destroy us. Carolyn Glick, thank you so much for joining us here at Secure Freedom Radio. God bless you. Keep up the great work, and we will be talking with you soon.